next story is about the great flood and this ship that saved their lives. We can read about it in Genesis chapters 5 to 9. So let's go ahead and listen Noah and his ark. After the murder of Abel, when Cain had moved away to the land of Nod, Adam and Eve were given another son and his name was Seth. They lived for many years still after that, but in the end, they both died, just as God had said they would, because of their sin in the Garden of Eden. By this time, there were many people in the world with villages and towns all over. But though there were many people, there were not many good people. It seems that the more there were, the worse they became, although there were a few really good men. One of the best was Enoch, whose father was Jared. Enoch walked with God and talked with God. God was closer to him than even his best friends. It was so wonderful that when he was 365 years old, God just took him away to heaven. He did not die as other people do. The Bible says he was not for God took him. Enoch left a son who lived to be the oldest man, Methuselah. We know very little about Methuselah except that he lived for 969 years. But by that time, men had become so bad that God decided to make an end of them all. But there was one man who was different and his name was Noah. Noah always tried to obey God and to keep away from doing wrong. He had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. And they and their families were like an island of goodness in a very bad world. God decided to speak to Noah and he told him that he was going to take away all the bad people from the world and cleanse it. But he would look after Noah and his family and keep them alive through it all because they had always done their best to please God. And God was going to destroy all living things by causing a great flood on the earth. To take care of his family, Noah had to make a great ship of wood called the ark and it had to be made exactly as God told him. It would be like a three-story house and must be made of a special kind of wood called gopher wood. Inside and outside, the wood must be coated with pitch, a kind of tar, so that not one drop of water would get through. In that ark, there would be room for Noah and his sons and their families. But it was also like a great stable. Into the ark, Noah must take a pair of every unclean animal or bird or creeping thing that human beings do not eat and seven pairs of every clean creature that we do eat. And there must be enough food to last them a whole year because while the flood lasted, they would not be able to get anything from outside. What a big ship that had to be! For 120 years, Noah worked to get it finished. And all the while, other people laughed at him and called him a silly old man. He was 600 years old by the time it was finished. But then God gave Noah seven days to get all the animals and his family inside and the great door was closed and sealed. And then it began to rain. For 40 days and nights it rained without stopping. Outside on the land, the water rose higher and higher till there was not a place left for the people to hide who had been so very bad and who had laughed at Noah. Not a mountain top showed, not a green bush or a tree. For 40 days and nights it rained without a moment's break. 
The ark drifted on the water, floating over the mountain tops and over all the places where people had lived before. Then the rain stopped, but for another 150 days the world was under water till the flood began to drain away again. By then, the ark had come to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And Noah sent birds out from the window of the ark to see whether there was dry land enough for them to go out yet. First, he sent out a raven and then a dove. And when one evening the dove came back with an olive leaf in its beak, no one knew that the trees were beginning to show again. A week later, the dove did not come back at all. And then no one knew there was dry land at last. The great door of the ark was flung open and out trooped the animals and last of all, Noah and his family. The first thing Noah did on dry land was to say thank you to God. How thankful they must have been because their family was the only family left in all the world. Noah built an altar and brought an offering to God to show that now again he and all his family would live as God's people, serving him every day. At that place, God made a wonderful promise that he would never again destroy the world with a flood, but every year there would be seed time and harvest, and summer and winter, just as it is now. Noah must go out with his family and his children, would again fill the world. And as a sign of his promise, God gave the rainbow so that whenever Noah and his children saw its beautiful colors, they would remember God's great promise. And every time we see a rainbow, we must remember the promise too. There never will be a great flood again as long as the world lasts. God had said so.